As for League Two, Torquay United's visit to Bristol Rovers saw Paul Buckle with an early chance to face his old club. And as if Paul didn't have enough to deal with in his first home game in charge, he also had to deal with our Clem at the Mem. It's not unknown for professional football managers to have their rituals and superstitions, and the new Bristol Rovers boss is certainly no exception. Continuing a tradition he established at his former club on every match day morning, Paul Buckle comes to his local cafe to gather his thoughts over a nice cup of coffee. Morning, Clip. Morning, Paul. Very superstitious. So is this pre-match relaxation or is this a, a caffeine boost to give you a juice into the game and all that adrenaline uh, stuff? A bit of both. Is it? Yeah, yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. We feel the job's done now. We feel organised and just relax the morning of the game. There is Let us not what would you have done if you'd got Torquay promoted? Because Bristol Rovers obviously came down, relegated. What a question. <laughs> Are you going to answer it? You never told me you were going to ask me that. <laughs> Clem, I don't know. It's, a, it's the honest answer, I don't know. Because I left it till after the final. Uh, paid respect to you know the position we was in at the time, which was a major position. We'd done so well to get there and uh, always going to make my decision after. And here we are, Bristol Rovers manager. You play for Torquay's youth teams? Yeah, I play for under-15s now. They thought I was going to go to Bristol Rovers, so... You're a traitor. <laughs> you shouldn't be in this car, son. That's all right. Thankfully, we are nearly there now. I was starting to get quite worried for Dad. Late on his first day of work. So, uh, what players are playing? Uh, I'll, I'll, be in in, I'll be in in literally two minutes. In fairness, you've been saying you're going to be in in two minutes for the last hour and a half. Oh, there's no left turn. Are we not? Perilously late. No, keep, keep going no. up. Follow uh, the road. Yeah. Oh, you can I'm go in there. Yeah, 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 that's it'll do us. Yeah. I'm going. What's this car here? Yeah. Have you got a parking space? There we are. Reserved Paul Buckle. Does that mean the porter cabin or this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of clubs that got potential, but I mean, you know, look at the city. It's the sixth biggest city in the country. Uh, neither team has really done anything over the last 20, 30 years. Um, yes, the potential is huge. We, we had one bright spot and we got promotion in a JPT final one season and took 35,000, I think it was, to the Millennium Stadium and then 40,000 to Wembley. I mean, that shows the potential of the club. Doing, what right? a nice strange old day, huh? I know, I know, I know. Knows all your strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know all the tricks that we got for him, though. Ah, no, no. It's all right, it's going to be a good day, I think. Right. It's going to be a good day, one we're looking forward to. Come on, let's go! Great chaps! You're going to get the big introduction now, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I'm definitely going to look to the left, I'm not to the right. <laughs> You're nervous about this, I can tell. <laughs> Buckle certainly didn't expect his defenders to allow his former charges so much time and space, and Torquay took advantage. Just 11 minutes in, and Taiwo Atino put away his first league goal. The Yellow Army were delirious, and it soon got even better. Kenyan international Atino pounced on Michael Smith's back pass. Keeper Scott Bevan, who followed Buckle up the M5 in the summer, beaten from the spot by Rene Howe. Rovers' close season revolution meant 10 players were making home debuts. Scott McLeish went close. And although Buckle needed a second half response, only Bevan's sharp save prevented the goals from soaring out of sight. But there was hope for the gas when Joe Anienza's effort was flicked up and Byron Anthony was left with a simple finish. Rovers had more than half an hour to salvage a point. Another ex girl Chris Zabrowski, came off the bench but missed both the target and the opportunity. I suppose this one always had the 
ability to be a bit tricky yeah. with the off the field side show. Yeah, that's football. Yeah, that's football. That's football. But we look a good side and uh, we'll learn from today. We'll learn from it. Was there a little bit of cat and mouse with a lot of the talky players knowing no, your philosophies no, and no, tactics no. today? No, we had enough chance at the end there, you know, to got back in. But I'm delighted in the end. You know, I'm delighted with the second half performance. How to win friends and influence people. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it's for special for the supporters. As I said, it wasn't a pullback on Martin Ling moment today. It was a, for the supporters, you know, they had the, uh, the heartache of the uh, playoffs last year. And uh, this is just a little step. It's only three points, but it's a pleasurable one for our supporters.